What's up everybody, right on schedule, Apple has released the next beta for iOS 17 and the last one that we'll be seeing, iOS 17 beta 8. So this update came in at around 572.2 megabytes for me. This is on my iPhone 14 Pro and it is about the similar size on all the devices, somewhere below 600 megabytes. Now along with this, Apple has also released iPadOS 17 beta 8, watchOS 10 beta 8, tvOS 17 beta 8, HomePod OS 17 beta 8, AirPods firmware update 6 beta 4, and VisionOS 1.0 beta 3. We do not have a macOS Sonoma update as for macOS we are still on a bi-weekly schedule as it won't be launching fully on September 12th when the rest of these updates will be launching. So first things first, Apple has sent out the invites for the September event for the iPhone and Apple Watch launches. It is going to be on September 12th and the invites are already out to the media. It's going to be a pre-recorded event just like the last two years, but there will be a live audience that will be watching this event live in Apple Park just like last year. The name of this new event is Wonderlust this year and as you can see with the animation, it's a combination of a silverish or titanium colored or grayish colored sand and blue color. Now, if you guys don't know yet, the rumored color for this year, just like last year it was the purple, this year the rumored color is supposed to be dark blue. So it might be hinting at that and the grayish or silverish sand color might be hinting at the titanium build that we are going to be getting with the 15 Pro and Pro Max phones. I can't wait to get to see the new iPhone. I'll be watching the event live on 12th of September and we'll talk about the betas and what we can expect until then and after that just a little bit shortly. Well, getting started with the betas for now, like I said, the update was around 572.2 megabytes and this is going to be the last beta update before we get an RC build. In the RC build, usually there are references to the images and features that will be iPhone 15 exclusive or exclusive to future products such as even maybe the Apple Watch Ultra and stuff like that. So we won't be getting the RC build until the day of the event. So we can expect that the RC build will be out on 12th of September and next week we won't be getting any update. Now, so moving on to the build number, if we go to settings, general and about, and then iOS version, we can see that the build number is 21A5326A. This is another A build, just like last time. And this basically A again, like we have talked about before, it represents getting closer to the final build or the RC build. And that's what we expected. Now this update, as you guys saw, is very small. And although the last two updates have also been a little small, there were still a few feature updates in that. But in this beta, as we expect, as we get closer to the event, we stop seeing new and new features because they are mostly the exclusive features for the next device. And that's what we see this time that we don't have any new features or anything new as such that we can see in this update. Most of it is you probably bug fixes and performance improvements. A couple of people have reported seeing some new splash screens on either Apple Music or Apple Photos and stuff like that, uh, especially in the Apple Music app. I don't have the screenshots here from the sources, but what I saw is that somebody who was connected to a Bluetooth in the car stereo and they had somebody else with also having a Beta 8 phone nearby. The other person was prompted to connect via SharePlay to be able to control the music. Now, as we know, SharePlay in car is going to be allowing other Apple users or iPhone users to be connecting and controlling the playlist instead of you having to pass the phone around to everybody. And that's a great feature, I think, as long as multiple people in your car that you're going in have Apple devices or iPhones. Now this update, we still don't see the feature for Apple Watch and iPhone to enable name drop. So as of now, if you don't know, we, we already have name drop feature from iPhone to iPhone where you can bring two devices or two iPhones together to just send over your contact information. This feature is also supposed to come to the Apple Watch and you should be supposed to name drop from Apple Watch to Apple Watch as well as an iPhone to Apple Watch or Apple Watch to iPhone. Uh, this feature is not in yet. We were expecting it now, but it isn't. So I'm expecting that maybe this will be enabled either in the RC build or 
in 7.1. Now, another feature that will be enabled in 7.1 is going to be the journaling app. And we knew about the journaling app all along that it won't be coming in right away. It'll be coming in in the 7.1 update later in the year. And I'm actually pretty excited for the journaling one. I'm actually excited to see how it collects your information automatically. We already have mood tracking now in the health app and other stuff. And it will be interesting to see how it collects data from your photos app, your maps, your health app and fitness and all the other things. It should be pretty good. Now, uh, coming back to the build number, we do not have a modem update on at least on my iPhone 14 Pro. We are exactly same at 2.08.02 from last time and this may vary according to device because it depends on which device it is but I haven't heard any of the devices getting this getting a new modem but let me know in the comments if you found a new modem update. Now as I said we also got an update for AirPods Pro and the version for AirPods Pro firmware has gone from 68289C to the new version being 68299B. Now again, as you can see, this is getting closer to A release. Now I'm expecting that either we'll get another A release next week or so, or we'll directly get an RC release where all the new features for AirPods such as adaptive audio and conversational awareness will be enabled for all users. As of now, it is available in beta already. And we have talked about conversational awareness as well as adaptive mode in videos before and in some shorts. Now I do want to talk about some of the benchmarks. Now, what I like to do is I don't like to conduct benchmark tests right after installing the beta. Instead, what I like to do is run the benchmark just before updating to the new version, because at that time it has already been six days and the phone has settled down pretty well. And that's when we get better scores. Now, if we go to here, I'll show you what I saw for beta seven in the scores. So right here, we saw 2,645 for the single core score versus 6,721 for the multi -core. Now, the importance of why I like, don't like to do it right away. When I ran this Geekbench score right after updating to beta 7, I had gotten a score of 2589 for single score versus 6570 for multi-core, which is obviously lower than this. And I don't think that it represents well because immediately after update, you'll see that the phone is optimizing a lot of things and that results in the reduction of the score. So I think this is a better way of looking at the Geekbench scores for the benchmarks. So when the next beta or the RC build will be released, I will be showing Geekbench scores for beta 8 and how it has been, similar to how we talk about battery health at the end of it. And now talking about battery health, if I go to settings and battery. So one great thing has been that if you go to battery health, my battery health has not reduced ever since beta 5 which is great. All the way from beta 1 to beta 5, I think my battery health reduced around 4% or so and I was getting worried. But I think it's a good sign that it has finally stopped now. Beta 7 had been notoriously bad for battery health this time and that's the first time I'd seen it. But thankfully, Apple seems to have fixed it and from the last two betas, I haven't seen this go down. Now talking about battery life, last beta 7 has been actually pretty good for me. I've mostly been at home, so it hasn't reflected that much, but I've tried not to charge my phone continuously so that I get a better average or a better indication of it. And I think it has been pretty good. The standby has been okay, to be honest with you. At night, I do lose more than what I would like to, but still in terms of the use, I think I've, yet, I've had pretty good battery life for beta 7. And I love to see that. Hopefully, beta 8 is gonna just improve on that instead of going anywhere back. Now, I do wanna mention some of the bugs that I have seen people report over on Reddit or other forums. I usually go and scour through as soon as the betas come out, I'll go and scour through what different people are reporting in terms of bugs and new features. And here's a few of them. So one person I saw has reported the CarPlay has been crashing for them. I didn't see anybody else concur with it, but I, that was just one person. Uh, another thing that another single person reported was App Store was still not working for them even in beta 7 as well as in beta 8 they're not able to uh they're not able to start app store as well as download new apps which is quite which it sucks to be honest um now other th another thing that some of them uh, some people have also reported being unable to enable iMessage and facetime and this has been more than one people 
so my IMSH and FaceTime has always been enabled right from the beginning. So I didn't have any issues and it's still enabled for me. But some people have reported that in beta 8 as well as for some people in beta 7, they were not able to enable iMessage and FaceTime. Now this might have to do with your carrier and their compatibility with betas as well sometimes. In the past, I have faced times when I was not able to enable this, especially living in Ireland, when some of the servers were trying to reach to UK and I was not able to send uh, data to the iMessage servers to enable it uh, based on some specific carriers in the past. Now, another feature that some people have reported is that Face ID is not working for them. In this report, these guys have been saying that they have it hasn't been working for them ever since beta 1. So it seems like it has been completely broken for them. Uh, again, this is more than one person. So it is a little bit of a concern, but I think it has not happened to me though. And if it doesn't happen to you, I don't think it will happen at this point. I think beta 8 is very close to release. So you shouldn't be expecting any new bugs. I think for people who have had this bug since beginning, uh, there seems to be something wrong. Maybe resetting their data might help them. And I've suggested that in the comments of where they posted it. Uh, let's see what they come back with. Now, as to when to expect next betas, as we talked about. So we should expect that next week, we most probably won't get any beta update. And the week after that, on 12th of September, we should get the RC build along with the new iPhone release. Now, once the new iPhone is announced, they will also be announcing the date for pre-orders and start of deliveries. And the week of the release, we should also see the final build after RC build. Essentially, they are usually the same. They're called the Golden Master Images or GM Images as well in some languages or uh, in Apple internally. But those are the ones that we'll be getting in that week. And we should have a pretty stable version, I hope. And as for macOS updates, as I said, we don't have a beta this week. And we are on a bi-weekly beta schedule for that. So I think we'll be getting that next week as usual. And that will continue until we get the final macOS version, which I think might coincide with some of the Macs being announced in October, maybe. Not sure. But that release will definitely come in October. Well, this was a quick update. A small one, since we don't have a lot of new things. Uh, if you want to take a look at the release notes, you can go into the feedback app or you can go into the link that I have posted in the description box below. And you should be able to see the new release notes for iOS and iPadOS 17 beta 8, as well as the other betas such as watchOS and tvOS. Uh, I did go through the notes and there isn't very really something very specific. The number of resolved issues has definitely increased versus the number of known issues has decreased, or at least the categories, which is a great sign. And that's what we expect as we come closer to the final release, of course. So if you want to go through those notes still by yourself, I'll post the link down in the description box and you can head over from there. All right, guys, that's it for this week. It was a small update. Like I said, not many new features. Now, let me know in the comment section down below if you have faced any bugs this time or seen any new bugs or any features that I have missed to cover here. And it'll be nice to have a chat with you guys in the comments down below. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. I'm trying to grow as a new YouTuber. If you like this content, please like the video if it helped and please don't forget to subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video cheers